Hey guys, we're at the Class D Airport at Lawrenceville, Georgia, KLZU. We just finished having lunch at the restaurant. So in order to depart from a Class D Airport, the very first thing we have to do is get the weather report. In this case, it's an ATIS. Now this will have a letter associated with it. That's how uh, the controllers can tell whether or not we have the current one. So let's flip over and listen to the ATIS. We'll probably catch it in, in progress. September 3005. Special Visual Approach, runway 2005. Caution for birds in the vicinity of the airport. Advise on initial contact here of information and whiskey. Whiskey is the letter. Whiskey, W. Listen to it again. Put out your information, whiskey time, 17500. Winds are calm. Visibility 10. Sky catered at 5500. Temperature 33, 2.21. On September 3005. Spread the visual approach, runway 25 in use. Caution for birds in the vicinity of the airport. Advise on initial contact here of information and whiskey. Okay, so he said we had uh, information whiskey, that's the letter. He gave us the altimeter setting, I put that in. He said we had a few or scattered clouds, I believe, at uh, 5,500 directly overhead. It's clear here, actually. And winds are calm. So now that I have that, I'm going to call the ground controller on the ground frequency. And then here it happens to be 121.8. I'm going to tell him where we are. We're at the restaurant, that we have information whiskey, so he knows we have the current weather and that we were ready to taxi for a uh, Northwest VFR departure. Here we go. Gwinnett Ground, Skyline 42742. Now it's possible we're back here, we may be blocked by some metal buildings. So. 42742, ground. 42742 is at the restaurant with whiskey, ready to taxi for a Northwest departure. 42742, ground, runway 25, turn right, whiskey, taxi to runway 25. All right, taxi to 25 via whiskey, 42742. All right, that's all there is to it. The ground controller has now given us permission to taxi. Right now, we're in what's called the non-movement area. That doesn't mean we can't move. It means that we can uh, move freely without talking to anyone. Right up ahead, we've got a whole short line, but since he has told us that we can go out there to this taxiway, which is whiskey, we're free to cross that whole short line and continue on taxiing. Once we cross this whole short line, we're then in the movement area the area that does require clearance from the ground controller. All right, we're going down to 2-5, so we're going to taxi to the right here, stay on this yellow yellow taxiway line. All right, we'll taxi all the way down there to end. To the end, looks like it's about half a mile, maybe a little less, and then we'll go into the run-up area and do our run-up stuff. Going a little downhill here, so I'm going to reduce the power so we don't pick up a bunch of speed. I don't want to have to ride the brakes all the way down there. One of the tricks to taxiing is that I want to make sure that I have, I'm not going so fast that I couldn't stop in the available taxiway left in front of me if I had some type of brake failure. Sometimes people will tell you you shouldn't taxi faster than a fast walk. Well, that's kind of nonsense. If you did that, these busy airports would just be road you know, it would be jammed up with traffic, so... Quinnett Tower, 676 Alpha... A fast is walk is probably a little too slow, but we don't want to be so fast that we couldn't stop if we had a brake failure. So as we get closer to the end of the taxiway down here, I want to be slowing down. Quinnett Ground, Skyhawk 80755 at Georgia Jet with information... Whiskey, VFR East. Somebody else calling in for the ground controller. Eight zero seven five five when I ground runway two five taxi via whiskey. Taxi two five via whiskey. Eight zero seven five five. Seven five five. Understand eastbound. Actually, we're gonna make that northbound for us. Eight zero seven five five. Seven five five northbound, Roger. All right. So this is the run up area. We're gonna pull off the taxiway, pull down here to the end, and we're gonna do our uh, pre takeoff checklist. Now. We will normally do this following a paper checklist, but I'll tell you, it's hot as blazes here. I've flown this airplane uh, many thousands of hours, and I actually have it memorized, so I'm just going to go through it memorized here. So the flight controls, free and correct. I'll look at the trim wheel as also being a flight control. Instruments, okay, airspeed looks good. The, uh, the heading, I mean, the attitude indicator is centered. We've got the right altimeter in there for the altimeter setting. Uh, turn coordinator is good. Let's see, this says we're in about 50 degrees, so I'm going to set the, the DG or heading indicator onto that. And the vertical speed indicator looks good. These are nav instruments, not going to be using them. Next thing is my radios. So I've already got the ATIS top radio. 
I had the ground controller here in the bottom radio, and that's the frequency I'm, I'm on now. Here at Gwinnett, when you leave the run-up area, they like you. Go ahead and be on the tower frequency. So let me go ahead and punch that in, 124.1. That's the, to land, line that up is the tower controller frequency. Uh, we're not going to bother with the GPS here. Well, I know how to get back. And the transponder is set to 1,200 in altitude, and the autopilot is off. Next thing will be my engine run-up. So that's done at 1,700 RPMs. There, 1700. It's not my first flight of the day, so I'm going to cycle a prop just one time as as uh, instructed in the POH. Bit of an RPM drop. That sounds good. Let me reach across over here and check my mags. There's one click. Drop looks good. Back to both. Here's two clicks. Back to both. Looks good. Pull my carburetor heat out, and I should see an RPM drop. There it is. I'm going to leave it out. Pull my throttle back to idle cutoff, and this is the lowest power setting it can ever have. The carburetor heat robs you of some RPM, and I'm at the lowest power setting. That still is, keeps on running, so carburetor heat goes back into cold. I'm back to 1,000 RPM. And we are now ready to taxi on out behind this, uh, looks like a, an arrow possibly from AP. And we'll go get in line here at the runway 25. As I sweat over there, like I said, the controller wants us to go ahead and be on the tower frequencies when we come out of the run-up area. A little warm in here today. Seasonable for uh, October. Got an airplane here on a short final. And we're going to be number two here at the whole short line. Tower, Archer 236, Delta, Home Shore, runway 25, Whiskey, ready to take off. We'd like to stay for a close pattern. Okay, now he's an Archer. He does call the controller. The controller's going to tell him to hold short. He can't do anything else. There's an airplane landing. I was either going to tell him to hold short or just ignore him altogether. There's really no reason to call the ground, call the tower controller saying that you're ready to take off when you see traffic on short final, or on the runway. Quit it, Darryl. So I usually just like to stay quiet until I know the runway is available. Monitor ground 9045. November 36, Delta, make left traffic, runway 25, clear for takeoff. Make left traffic, 236, Delta, runway 25, clear for takeoff. A little bit of mixture, reduction, keep your fouling spark plugs. Keep your fouling spark plugs. Alright, so the off. archer's moving on out. We'll move up number one at the whole short line. I'm not even going to bother calling him because all he's going to do is tell me to hold short. Can't do anything until that airplane rotates. Alright, I'm now at a full stop at runway 25's whole short line. There goes the archer. I'm going to be watching him. As soon as I see that nose come up, then I'm going to call the tower controller and I'm going to tell him with our call sign that we're ready for a takeoff at five. All right, the archer is in the air. Quinta Tower, 42742 is ready for takeoff at 25. Remember, 42742, Quinta Tower, of course, northwest from way 25, clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, 42742. November right. 36 Delta departing traffic ahead of you, arrival runway 25. As we're starting to roll out here, I'm going to make one last final look on everything. I start at the bottom and work my way up. Fuel's on both, trim November set, cow flaps are open. Alpha. I'm going to go to 10 degrees Departing traffic ahead of you, arrival runway 25, cut away. Well, and we're going to go to full ridge. Got the right, that's and we're ready to go. So all I have to do now, been cleared for the takeoff, is line up on the center line and put the power in. And there we are in the air. You now craft makes the X-rays current when out temperatures uh, three zero zero two. A little bit of thermal bumps out here. Take out that ten degrees of flaps, and a little bit of trim up to account for the nose drop that it will cause. And that is pretty much how you handle a departure, a takeoff from a Class D airport, starting with the ground controller, getting the ATAs, going to the 
the uh, power controller and launch. So Class D, as soon as we're outside of that dashed blue line, we'll be able to f we'll be free to leave his his radio frequency. So that's how it's done. Class D out of KLZU in Atlanta. See you guys.